All right, so thanks so much for joining today's workshop Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about how to get LinkedIn and um, what else you can do with it. So um, we're going to talk about some important things today, like what is LinkedIn and why you should use it, ways to enhance your profile, how to make and maintain connections, the value of groups, and searching for opportunities. Um, but first, I'm going to talk about what exactly is LinkedIn. So um, it's actually the world's largest professional networking site on the internet. It has more than 675 million members um, represented all over the world in 200 countries and territories. Uh, professionals are signing up to join LinkedIn at a rate of more than two new members per second. So it is constantly growing. And 40 million of those users are actually college students and recent grads. So it's actually the younger demographic, which is really interesting. It's not the platform that older seasonal um, or seasoned professionals use. It's actually the younger population, which is really exciting to hear that they're seeing the value of this important tool. And over 30 million companies are represented on LinkedIn. So the way I look at this that is also really fascinating um, is that some companies are updating LinkedIn just like they're updating their own website, but they're going to learn a little bit more than what you would just find on their web page. Um, they're going to be, you know, posting jobs, talking about upcoming events, meet with people um, behind the company, which is really cool, and then connecting with them um, kind of in a one-off conversation to learn more about the company culture, what does that person enjoy about working there, things like that, um, that you can get so much more out of even just on their own website. And then this is also a really important networking platform for major companies like the Fortune 500 organization. So you're finding a little bit of everything on this platform from nonprofit to the tech industry to um, education and Fortune 500 companies. So there is quite the spectrum here. Um, I like this quote, um, you know, a lot of times people think of, oh, I have to be on LinkedIn only if I'm looking for a job. Um, but they're actually saying that LinkedIn is not just to find your dream job, but it's way to be better than the job you already have. So networking is something that we should always be thinking about, even when we have an internship or we're thinking about entering the workforce. Um, you always want to be thinking of the connections that you can make because that's actually how 80% of jobs are landed, is through someone you know who knows someone. It's those personal referrals, but we don't always remember who works at certain companies. That's where LinkedIn really comes into play. So we can find connections through any organization or pretty much any industry, any major, especially the Stonehill family that I'll show you later. Um, and it's based on the first, second, and third level connections. So if you and I were connected, we would be first level connections. And then I have access to your connections who become my second level connections. And then your connections connections are my third level. So before you know it, I might have access to over millions of people just because of that expansion, which is really awesome because odds are you probably can find a personal contact at any company based on you know, three degrees of separation through LinkedIn. It's a great way to stay connected with contacts. You, know, you think of your friends, your neighbors, your peers, um, people at Stonehill. It's just a nice way to see where people have landed. Are they changing jobs? Did they do this internship? Are they going particular conference, things like that. And it's just another way to stay in the know. Um, and employers expect to learn more about you through this platform. They want to know more about your personal brand. What do you care about? What are the skills in your profile? Even your cover photo on your profile page can tell a little bit more about a person and the things that they care about. Um, but also an opportunity for you to talk about your qualifications, experiences. You can even showcase projects and creative work that you've done, um, almost like a digital portfolio. So um, super important to you know, showcase more than what you have on your resume. 80% of jobs, as I mentioned, are found through networking. So that leaves only about 20% of positions that are posted through job boards and other online platforms. So that gives you a sense of how important it is to build up relationships with people, um, and to stay connected and discover new opportunities. So some things that I wanted to point out, um, if you already have a LinkedIn or if you don't, I would certainly go to linkedin.com 
and walk through the profile builder, um, which you know gives you an opportunity to um, upload your name, a profile photo, um, a headline, and then experiences, things that you would find on your resume, your skills, preferences, um, things like that. So assuming that you have probably gotten to that point, here are some of my top tips that can help you enhance your profile. So the first thing would be your profile photo. Um, so this could be something that is as professional as you can have it, um, not meaning that you have to go out and spend a lot of money for someone to take a headshot of you. You know, it could be done on campus in the Career Development Center. We're happy to take the picture with you in our phone, um, or we do have a camera in the office that we can use, but um, you do want to have something as professional as possible, not you just kind of hanging out on the weekend or something like that, too casual. Um, but something where you have like a nice top on, your hair is groomed, that sort of thing, because first impressions are everything. And it's better to have a photo than not have a photo. The second thing to think about would be identifying your brand in your headline and summary. So this is the section right below your photo. You can edit all of this with a little pencil tool and kind of type in um, something that you want to use to describe yourself. Think about the industry that you want to get into and how you can show value. But I'll go over this a little bit more later when I do the demonstration um, and kind of walk through my profile. And then you also want to think about selecting your desired location or industry. So you know, as an undergrad student, you may not know all the answers of what exactly you want to get into after you graduate or what kind of internship you're looking for in a future semester. But something that you're hoping to aspire to. So if you want to stay in the Boston area, then for your location, you should list the Boston area. If you're hoping to get into um publishing then you should list that is your industry that you want to get into this is important because recruiters and hiring managers use the back end of linkedin and they're searching just by keywords so location it could be major industry job title things like that obviously skills are going to be really important in this section too but having this information listed helps them narrow down the candidates that they want to reach out to for an interview and tip is customizing your profile URL so that it appears most naturally. So um, next to your name, there should be another little editing pencil icon, and you can edit your uh, the default URL that LinkedIn gives you, which is typically www.linkedin.com forward slash in, and then all these other letters and characters at the end. We do want to clean this up to maybe something like first initial last name, and that way you can um, put that on your resume. You could put that in the contact info at the top of the resume um, near your email and phone number. It looks really good to streamline employers and hiring managers to contact you directly through LinkedIn rather than going onto LinkedIn and searching for your name and finding so many other people maybe with a similar name and not finding the right you. This will streamline that process for them. And then another good place to put it might be your email, if you have a business card or another way of um, you know, sharing your contact information, include it there as well. Another thing that you wanna think about is uh, LinkedIn gives you an opportunity to elaborate. So typically with resume, we're thinking about one page, so kind of our businessy document. But with LinkedIn, we can expand on that. So when you have some of the most important bullet points that you wanna bring to LinkedIn, Tell a mini story. Use personal pronouns here. On the resume, we don't use those things. So um, you want to talk about the initiatives, the accomplishments. There are things that you're really proud of that you contributed in that last job or leadership role or what it means to be an athlete. Um, so you can certainly expand on that. Employers and hiring managers love seeing this because they get to know a little bit more about your personality, drive, motivation, passion areas. Um, maybe other things that you might not have even listed on the resume. Um, they'll hopefully find that out about even more about you um, on LinkedIn. Again, another really important point to this. Another thing um, to think about is to um, not necessarily do a complete copy and paste from your resume. A lot of people kind of fall into this trap of, um, you know, I've already done the work on the resume. Why can't I just throw it all on LinkedIn? But if you think about it, it kind of defeats the purpose. If they've already read the resume, they want to come on to LinkedIn to learn a little bit more about you. They want to go deeper. Um, but if it's the same exact thing, it's not always helpful. So with LinkedIn, 
Um, you can certainly expand on the keywords, use personal pronouns, give examples of your work, really fill in all the categories that LinkedIn walks you through um, so that you can, um, you know, they can learn a little bit more about you than what they would just find on the resume. Recommendations is one of my other favorite sections. Um, that's typically down towards the bottom of LinkedIn. So I would start to consider asking former supervisors, colleagues, peers maybe, mentors to write a recommendation for you on LinkedIn. And this is different than asking for a letter of recommendation. This is actually all done through the, pro, the platform. So the catch here is that the person you're asking already has to be on LinkedIn and they already have to be a first level connection. So um, everything is done through the system where when you're on the person's profile page, there's a drop down arrow next to their name. And one of the options is to ask to be recommended. And then a message window will pop up. You can include, you know, dear so-and-so, um, I would really love if you wouldn't mind taking the time to write me a quick recommendation for my LinkedIn profile about that internship I had with you last summer and where I took the lead on ABC Project. Um, thank you so much, I would really appreciate that. And you know, kind of wrap it up and then that gets sent to the person and then they can see your message and then um, share some text back with you and you can approve it and then it goes live right on your profile. So super easy peasy, really great thing to do. I look at the recommendation section on the LinkedIn profile as kind of icing on the cake. It just looks really good to have all this great information about your skills, your background, your passion areas, but also to have some really nice things that people have said about you. Another thing to think about is being active on updating your status, commenting, and joining conversations on LinkedIn. So it is another social networking platform. It is one more thing to update and um, you know, be aware of and you know, not to let information get too stale. So um, you know, talking about maybe opportunities that you have coming up or getting on the Dean's list or getting an award on something, um, but also for you to comment on other people's updates right on that main landing page when you're on LinkedIn, um, where people are talking about articles or um, things that are happening in their world. You know, it is good to be an active and engaged uh, member on LinkedIn. Um, so it's certainly something to think about. And also to follow relevant news sources and companies so that you stay in the know. Um, I learned so much by just being on LinkedIn about my personal um, and professional industry that I'm in. I follow a lot of groups and um, organizations that have to do with higher, higher education and career development. And um, we're always talking about different trends that are happening and professional development opportunities that are coming up. So um, it would be great for you to find things that you're interested in, whether you just use the search bar right at the top of LinkedIn and you put in any keywords and things will come up that might be of interest to you. Um, and then finally, the skills section. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but super important to have because um, this is the searchable section that recruiters use daily. So if you have Adobe Photoshop, photography, um, InDesign, um, SharePoint, you know, all sorts of different technical keywords, um, you know, that definitely helps you and the algorithms um, for you to pop up when recruiters and hiring managers are looking to fill certain positions. They want to see who can we reach out to, who are some qualified people out on LinkedIn. Odds are they're going to find some really great candidates and you want to be one of them. So when we think about who's going to be in our network, who are we going to connect with, there's certainly some things to consider before either accepting or sending um, those requests. So, um, you know, some people that I would certainly think about would be your Stonehill peers. Yes, absolutely. Think about people who are in your class. They're probably on LinkedIn as well. Um, people from orientation or on your sports team um, or campus ministry or, who, you know, people you did a hope trip with, things like that. Um, absolutely connect with them. They would be great to have in your network because you just never know um, when you might need to reach out to that person or they may know someone who could be beneficial to you. Really great thing to do. Um, certainly people that you've worked with in the past, you can absolutely connect with your friends. Basically, the more people, the better, but maybe shy away from people you've never met. Not always that helpful because the way I look at it too is if I had someone in my network and you reached out to me and said, hey, do you know uh, so-and-so at you know, this particular company? 
And if I said, sorry, I don't, they just randomly, you know, um, connected with me. That's not really helpful. And that doesn't really show value to the power of networking, the way that it would be different if I could speak personally and, and more in depth about how I know that contact and how they would be beneficial to your career path. So you might always want to think, when you are making connections, always include a personal message about why you want to connect. Um, so what is your ask? Why is this connection important to you? Why are you reaching out? Show that you've done your research on them um, and use the option to get introduced through mutual contacts whenever you can. So whether you name drop or you ask someone to reach out to another person on your behalf and you know, this is why, really great to connect the dots um, and again, to show that value and interest of how this relationship is going to be helpful to your career. Um, so you might want to say something um, if you were reaching out to a Stonehill alum who works at your dream company. Um, you have a certain number of characters, so it does have to be short and sweet in that initial connect message. Um, do you want to introduce yourself, how you came across their profile, do you know a mutual contact? Um, did a professor encourage you to contact the person or someone in the career center? You could certainly mention that. And then, are you hoping to do an informational interview? Are you hoping to talk more about the internship that the company has posted? Um, are you hoping to do a job shadow? Anything like that is going to really catch their attention and they'll be more inclined to accept your connection, um, which is only going to help you in the end. But if they have no idea who you are, why you're reaching out, not going to be helpful and they're not going to you know most likely accept the invite because they have no idea what you're looking for so really take the time here um and one way to really start thinking about how to make those connections and finding people in your area of interest is going to be using the alumni tool on linkedin um, so i have a screenshot here and um, we can definitely pull that up together in a few minutes but um you know, as of today, it shows you that there's over 19,000 people that you can connect with right at your fingertips. Um, and it shows you where they live, where they work, some of the other columns are what they do and um, what their major was. So when someone says, oh, I don't know anyone who works at Converse, um, I'll say, okay, have we gone on to the LinkedIn alumni page yet? And a lot of times they hadn't gotten to that point yet, but when we pull it up together, there's a number of alums who work there. And this is an awesome way to, again, build those relationships, learn a little bit more about what's happening on the inside of the company, and um, for you to learn more about the day-to-day, -day, company culture, the internship program, what the onboarding and interview process is like, what do they look for in candidates? So much value can happen here. And this is one of the really cool aspects of LinkedIn. Um, another one is finding groups. And so, um, there's thousands and thousands of groups on LinkedIn, and these are um, ways for you to learn about different industries, um, networking and professional development events, um, asking questions to you know, people who might be possible mentors, for you to also hear about job opportunities and other leads, um, all in a safe space. So again, these don't necessarily happen in person. It's a virtual community, basically discussion threads, um, conferences, things like that, but there's literally an industry group for every um, organization and every um, uh, industry that you can imagine. So there's a lot here. Um, I belong to several professional groups on LinkedIn and I love it. I've gotten so many great contacts out of it. I've learned about conferences that I probably would have never heard about if I wasn't in the group. Um, and then it's turned into, you know, connecting on social media and other things. So um, I really do encourage, you know, for students to really stay in the know and connect with these other um, people who are like-minded and share the same interests. And then another big aspect of LinkedIn is the job and internship search. So um, here's the screenshot of basically what looks like a, another type of job board that you might be familiar with. Um, but the cool thing is 77% of jobs are just posted to LinkedIn. So if you're not on LinkedIn, you're probably missing out on a lot of opportunities. And 48% of recruiters only use LinkedIn. And then 89% of recruiters have filled positions just through LinkedIn. So it is successful. It's really um, an important profile and platform to have um, to connect with these amazing opportunities. So 
um, you can see that you can you know, search by title, skill, or company in any zip code area. And then LinkedIn also gives you suggestions. And a lot of the work for you based off the algorithms and information and keywords that you have on your profile are giving you some suggestions, which is obviously a big time saver as well. But the cool thing is, it's going to show you all of the connections that you already have to work at these companies. So again, they've already done a lot of the work for you. And it's up to you to take advantage of those leads and follow up with them and learn a little bit more. Um, and hopefully those are things you can take to the interview, cover letter, um, you know, just to really make yourself the strongest and most marketable candidate possible. Um, so just to kind of wrap up the PowerPoint part of the webinar um, is, you know, if you're on LinkedIn and you have all this information, what do you do now? Um, so I would certainly make time for it. It's not something that you want to check once in a while. Um, I would get on it absolutely a couple of times a week. Um, if that would be the bare minimum um, because so much is happening at a fast pace. So, um, you know, positions are posted just for a short amount of time or um, registrations for things are only limited and you just don't want to miss out. Um, using the app is also really helpful um, for on the go. So, you know, you're standing in line at the supermarket or something like that, hop on LinkedIn, you know, give some things a comment, a like, a share. Um, it really just does help you, you know, stay um, active and gets your name out there a little bit more than kind of being tucked away and not participating at all. Um, and then try getting recommended. I think that's a great little homework assignment, you know, with the downtime that you might have, um, you know, Others out. If you can get a couple, I would aim for maybe three to five recommendations, um, but even just one or two is a really great start. Um, and then start thinking a little bit more critically about your buzzwords that you're using. Are they tied to the industry that you want to get into? Is the headline nice and strong or does it still say student at Stonehill College? Not helpful. Um, so you want to talk more about the field that you want to get into. What are your aspirations? Um, what are you seeking, basically? And then make sure you've included um, maybe 10 to 15 skills, again, the minimum um, in that word bank section of the skills, you can have, I believe, up to 40 or 50. Um, so really maximize that opportunity to plug yourself as much as possible with the strengths that you have. And um, you know, if you're brand new to LinkedIn, I think starting off with about 25 connections is really helpful. It's better than having none or one. Um, but like I said, if you're finding peers to connect with and then um, LinkedIn will give you those recommendations of other people that you might know. You're going to get to 25 in probably a few minutes, so not to worry. <laughs> and always um, try to keep learning about LinkedIn, you know, doing webinars, trainings, and um, other ways to educate yourself about this really critical platform because it's constantly changing. They're adding new things all the time to make things easier for job seekers and for students, so, and for employers. Um, some of my other favorite sections is there's um, a section called LinkedIn Learning, and this is incredible. A lot of the um, information that's in that area of the tool are free uh, trainings, um, articles, videos on all things like career development related and about different industries. So definitely take a look at that. And then there's also a salary and interview tool section. So if you're um, getting ready for the workforce and you're not sure what kind of salary to ask for that's in your area, this is an awesome tool. It's very similar to like salary.com or payscale.com, but all contained within LinkedIn. And then the interview section is really awesome as well. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up there with the presentation, um, but I am going to pull up um, LinkedIn. And All right, so here's my LinkedIn. And a couple of things that I pointed out during the um, presentation piece was um, about the profile. So when I click on my profile, this is the headline section that I was talking about. Um, and this is something that you can change with the editing tool. And so whether you have a job title, internship, leadership role on campus, or being an athlete, um, you know, you could certainly put a few things about yourself there. And then your about section is another 
um, important kind of summary intro, thinking of your personal branding. Um, you know, you do want to include a little bit more about where you're headed. What are your personal and professional aspirations? Um, kind of what makes you tick? What makes you really good at what you do, do you think? And then where I was talking about the editing your URL is going to be right over on this section. And um, when you click editing tool here, you can put in that first initial last name, maybe um, whatever is available. This is the link that you would copy to put on your resume, email signature, business card, anything like that, that you want to um, have people connect with you on LinkedIn. So again, super nice and easy. Um, but you know, you can certainly, um, you know, talk more about your experiences. These are some things that I have on my profile. So it's not exactly what you're going to find on my resume, but, um, some additional information. And then also the recommendations that I had talked about. These are things that people have said about me and have recommended me for. Okay. And then some companies I follow and stuff like that. Um, and this is the section about, um, the other LinkedIn products. You can see the LinkedIn learning is here, the salary section, um, finding leads, groups are here. So again, using those keywords um, to find groups that you might want to get involved with that are relevant to your industry, not a bad idea. And then the alumni tool. So when we go to the search and we put in Stonehill College, we're going to click on the college's uh, main LinkedIn page. And then right over on the left, we have a couple of other menu options. We're gonna click on alumni. And this is where we can see all of the 19,000 plus people who have LinkedIn or um, uh, have Stonehill College in their LinkedIn profile. Um, I can search to find contacts at any company or within keywords or a job title maybe, but it's going to narrow down and show me some of these filters, which are where they live, where they work, what they do. So again, this is the industry section. And then what they study. So um, by major. <clears throat> so the really cool thing is say we were looking for internships or opportunities at a particular dream company you have. Um, if I put it in Converse, I can see that there are 24 contacts who have Converse in their profile, which is awesome. And then you can see that the filters automatically um, reworked the categories and um, the contacts that we would find there. So there are 20 in the Boston area, but there's one in Australia. There's one in the UK. Um, and when I scroll all the way down, though, I can see here they all are. All of these have Converse in their profile somewhere. So if I were to looking, you know, if I were looking to do an informational interview with someone, I could reach out to one of them, click on the message button, and that's where I would have my intro, why, you know, where we're saying like, what is the ask? What am I hoping to get out of this? Why should we connect? Things like that. This is going to be the best way to go about it. So really awesome way to um, find people who either do something that you're interested in. You could, again, put in a job title here. You could put in um, you know, publishing, um, sports management, anything like that. And you're going to see people within the Stonehill family that you can reach out to. Good news is they want to help you. They want to help you with your professional development. They want to put you in touch with any internship or employment leads that they might have. Um, I think this is also a really great tool for anyone thinking about grad school. And if you wanted to search by a particular program you're looking at, See what other alums have done it. Ask them what their experience was like, or even for postgrad service. Um, it's a great way to get a feel of someone who's been there, done that, and what was their experience like, and how might it be a value or beneficial to you. You really want to, um, you know, kind of live through their experience. But if they were to do it all over again, what advice would they have for you? Um, so, a really great way to, you know, really play up those connections and. Um, as I said, you know, Stonehill alums love hearing from undergrads. So you are not bothering them. You're not pestering them. They want to hear from you. <laughs> um, and then with the job section, um, you know, I'm not sure actually if I can move my little bar here. Um, the job section, as I was saying, kind of treats like a typical job board, but you can see the contacts that work at each of these companies, which is another really great way um, to network and have that personal rapport with them, kind of learn 
um, the behind the scenes info, things like that. So um, I love that feature. And then a lot of times companies are using this um, blue easy apply option, which is basically no resume required. They're literally taking everything from your profile to send to that company. Um, so they're making it super easy for you to apply for those opportunities. But again, another important reason for having um, a pretty near complete LinkedIn profile. Um, you don't want to undersell yourself or anything like that. You want it to be as sharp and strong as possible. Um, so, you know, feel free to reach out to anyone in the Career Center or come to drop-in hours for a quick resume critique. We'd be happy to give you some pointers. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. And so I think that might be about it. I'm going to um, end the recording here and um, take any questions.